Greetings builders, the status of Kalgur League is almost 3 months old and here are the 3 most played builds at the moment. Don't forget that if you wanna try any of those you can find links for POBs and complete guides in the video description. And if this video helps you, please leave a thumbs up to support the channel. Thank you very much and let's get into it! Let's start with this flaming hot build that is the third most played by high level players, the Rytheus Fire Chieftain with the Marauder class. This is probably the easiest way to have such a strong presence. You just need to walk past the enemies and they will melt and explode without even touching you. To visit the pros of this build I would start with how simple it is. Because of the Chieftain Ascendance you only need to stack fire resistance to have all elemental resistance. Because of that you can also easily cap your chaos resistance. Keeping on that topic, also because of the Chieftain Ascendance you can also easily have 90% resistance to all elements making you very tanky without much investment. Above all of that, Rytheus Fire is a super fun and smooth build to play because you just run and shield shard your way through many many maps per hour. Now to visit the cons I'll start saying that this build doesn't have a big single target damage without a lot of investment. But don't worry, you'll be able to kill map bosses easily even on a low budget. This build is an amazing league starter and it's meant as a cheap and fast currency farmer. As for budget, this build is cheap, you can get it destroying early endgame maps with only around 70 chaos. To comfort with advanced 3 yellow maps, I recommend investing around 120 chaos, and for easily completing a Rattlers, you need to invest around 4 divines, mostly in your survivability. Don't forget that on poebuilds.net you can find a list with all the equipment that you need to buy for this build, with direct links for examples being sold by other players. You only need 2 mandatory unique items for this build. The first is the Rise of the Phoenix Shield that grants up to 200 life regeneration per second and most important, plus 5% to maximum fire resistance. Next we also need the Cloak of Flames Armor that grants 40% of the physical damage you take to be received as fire damage. This is great because we have 90% fire resistance. For clear speed I'll give it 10 out of 10. You just need to run through the maps and enemies will die just because of your presence. It's super smooth and one of the best clear speed experiences you're going to have on PoE. The boss damage on the other hand is not great. I'll give it only 7 out of 10 because you need a lot of currents to scale single target damage. But as I mentioned before, this is meant as a map farmer and you can kill map bosses easily on a low budget. For this availability I'll give it 9 out of 10. Thanks to the shift in ascendance you can get 90% of all elemental resistance and even easily get maximum chaos resistance, all of that combined with over 2000 life regeneration. I only took one point out because it needs more investment to be able to face tank physical bosses. Next in second place we have the super strong Archmage Ice Nova Hierophant with the Templar class. This build stacks as much mana as possible to take advantage of the Archmage support gem that grants up to 19% of your mana as extra lightning damage. The skill of choice was the transfigured gem Ice Nova of Frostbolts that deals a lot more damage when casted near a Frostbolt. And to make things smoother we're using the Kitava Sturz helmet to automatically cast the Frostbolts for us. To visit the pros of this build I would start with its boss damage. All of those overlapping ice novas on countless frost bolts cause bosses to die like simple monsters. The clear speed is awesome as well. With the help of frost blink of wintry blast, we can zoom through maps very fast while casting ice novas in all directions. It's just amazing. Now to visit the cons, I'll start saying that this build isn't cheap. It needs a few divine orbs to work properly. Another issue is that you must have extra mana in all pieces of equipment and that might make the gearing process a little harder. Now talking about the budget, as mentioned before this build isn't cheap, you need to invest at least 10 divine orbs to make it work. You only need 2 mandatory unique items for this build, the first and most important is the Kitava Sturz helmet that triggers socketed gems when you use at least 100 mana in one cast. This makes the frost bolts needed to be casted automatically for a lot smoother clear speed. Next we also need the anathema ring that causes our curse limit to be the same as our maximum power charges, in this case 4. For clear speed I'll give this build 10 out of 10, we are just super fast and our ice novas are all over the place the whole time, you won't even have the chance to see the enemies before they get obliterated. 
The boss damage is also amazing and deserves 10 out of 10. It's just so many overlapping ice novas being casted on countless frost bolts that the bosses won't even have the chance to survive over than 2 seconds. For this survivability I'll give it 9 out of 10. It not only have a big pool of life and energy shield, but also 50% of the damage is taken from mana before life. And as you know, we have a lot of mana on this build. We also hit enemies so many times per second that the instant leech causes your life to be full almost 100% of the time. Finally, the most played build is the Lightning Strike Trickster with the Shadow Class. Lightning Strike is an awesome skill that used to be on top of the meta, but went down after a couple of nerfs. Now with the recent buffs, it's back to the top and with more power than ever. To list the pros of this build, I would start with this clear speed. Besides a strong melee hit, Lightning Strike also creates many lightning projectiles that run on the floor, killing every enemy on its path. Besides that, this build also counts with the Trickster Ascendants to be super fast and tanky. It has 7 frames charges for extra damage and speed, and a lot of defensive layers. Now, to list the cons, the first thing that comes to mind is that this build needs a good elemental call to work properly. But don't worry, it's easy to buy one from other players. As for budget, this build is not expensive at all. You can get it destroying early in game maps with only around 80 chaos. To comfort with advanced yellow maps, you need to invest around 150 chaos, and for easily completing rattlers, I recommend investing around 4 divines. For clear speed, I'll give this one 10 out of 10. As mentioned before, you have 7 frames charges and a huge effect of elusive that grants this build a lot of movement speed. Besides that, Lightning Strike creates many projectiles that run on the floor, exploding many enemies that aren't even close to you yet. The boss damage is also amazing, deserves 9 out of 10. Lightning Strike just received a big damage buff, and this build is an awesome boss killer. For this survivability, I'll give it 9 out of 10. This build has over 100,000 effective HP because of high armor, evasion, spell suppression, fortify, and even a trickster buff that causes you to take 40% less damage. Above all, you are immune to freeze and stuns. And that's it for today guys, are you playing any of those meta builds? Please take a second to tell me in the comments and leave a thumbs up to support the channel. I wish you guys an amazing day, and don't forget to keep building!